have a body that is alive. Say amen. amen. Well, then you qualify to rule. <laughs> you have to have flesh on you to have dominion. This is just revealing what the word said, right? You have to have flesh. Spiritual beings are not supposed to rule in this world. They're not. That's good. We are. We were given dominion. And if you belong to Jesus Christ, you were given power over all the power of the enemy. And why, why should you fear? The one who made everything that ever was, the spirit realm, the physical realm, even in eternity, they're there working for us before we get there. Why should you fear anything in your life? We shouldn't. We should never fear. We're supposed to be full of life, excitement, and celebration. Yeah. This is a temporal world, and it gets more and more temporal to me. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like a, a dot, like a little space, like a little tiny space in time. That's what we are. Eternity is beyond anything, anything, the little bits I've seen of the future, like the future future, is so amazing. Yeah. Even so much more amazing than anything I've seen. And what we will be doing. This yeah. this earth will be like dust in your memory. Come on. So don't let any offenses Come on. hold you back. Yeah. Wow. Do not let unforgiveness hold you back. Amen. Don't let fear hold you back. Amen. Don't let anything. Don't let the fact that people don't like you. Or they don't approve of you. Or they don't think much of you. Or you don't qualify. You qualify to God or he wouldn't have sent you here. That's right. We are supposed to be dangerous. Amen. We're not supposed to be afraid of the enemy. We're supposed to be dangerous against the enemy. That's right. So if you have fear tonight, kick it out. Yeah. If you have stuff in your home that doesn't belong there, I'm talking about spiritual stuff, go home, open the door and kick it all out. Yeah. I, I do it just because I think it's fun. <laughs> My neighbors either like me or they move. <laughs> and if they move, they move filled with the anointing. <laughs> and I tell God really does pick the most unexpected person. Like I would have been on the bottom of my list to pick to do this. You know what I do? Talk about the mysteries of heaven and the powerful mysteries in the Word of God and what it was like in the past, what it's like in the future. You know, where you were before you were here, how you lived inside God himself. In him you lived, you moved, you had your very being. Yeah, yeah. You existed there. You moved in and out on the rays of the glory. You couldn't go beyond that. You didn't have a mansion in heaven way back before you came here. You did not live on the earth. I know some people think that. No, good luck on that one. You didn't live on the earth, okay, until you were born here. And the day you really should celebrate, if you could keep track of it, was the day you were conceived. That's the day you left heaven. Not when you were born. When he sent you from himself. And wherever you lived at the time of that took place, if you know it, there are open portals made for you to, to empower and speak into that land. See, I live in Florida, but I was conceived in New York. And I haven't spoke there yet, but I will. Yes. Yeah. There's powerful portals waiting for me to speak, yeah. to release things there when I go there. Come on. That's where I came from. My heavenly father was sent to my earthly father and my mother. Lived there for eight years. Yes, you really do plow home through the snow up to here. That's not made up. <laughs> if in the wintertime, you never know if there's going to be a sidewalk or you're digging a trench all the way to your house. And so I didn't mind moving to Florida. I like Florida. You live with alligators in your bathtub. Iguanas in your closet. You know, we, my, I had seven brothers. They dragged everything in. We moved down there in the wintertime. It was 40. And we wore t-shirts, you know, t-shirts and no shoes and shorts. Because we just left 40 below. It was like summer. <laughs> 
But I was taught by my heavenly father, by my earthly father. And I think he was the best example of Christ I ever knew in my life. And people can say what they want to about me, but they better not touch my daddy. Come on. Come on. And we may have fought each other like cats and dogs, my brothers and sisters, but you better not say anything about my dad. You would be in big trouble. We would all come after you. Because my dad loved everybody, even his enemies. He did. He went home to heaven with an amazing report that he didn't just learn about love, but he became love. Mm. Now, I know Jeff was talking about that too uh, the other day, that the best thing you can bring to heaven is how many people you love. It isn't about the great things that we do, although they are important to God. He has assigned them to us, but the number one assignment for us is to love our family well. Love our family, okay? I know we can love a lot of other people, and that's wonderful, but we should definitely not leave our family out, even the rascals. I know everybody's got, not everybody, some people are just living a blessed life, but there are people that have rascals or people you wish lived on the other side of the world, maybe they do. <laughs> but still let them know you love them. Because I remember I'd be in heaven and somebody come home to heaven and they'd be standing before the Father and he would look at that person and say, you have blessed my heart because you have loved your family well. That was a high honor. That's a high honor given in heaven when God can say that to you. That doesn't mean they had to love you back. It doesn't mean they had to appreciate you or even understand you. But these people had loved their family well. And so even though I travel a lot, like a whole lot, and you, you know, birthdays go by and all kinds of holidays go by, you forget when they are. And heaven will have lots of forever time to celebrate whatever I want to. Uh, but I still love my family. Even the ones that don't care about what I do or think I shouldn't be doing this and think I need deliverance. See, it's everywhere it happens. Every family has it. You think, well, your whole life must be amazing, but there's always people that are confused by the enemy or don't understand. You love them anyway. Right? You just love them anyway. So loving your family well is important to God. And anytime you love people who really don't like you, you're really blessing God. I totally understand blessing, don't curse that, that thing right there. He means that. And I know it's easy sometimes if your flesh gets riled up, you just want to jump on somebody. <laughs> Send them into tomorrow. <laughs> so they're not there with you today. <laughs> it's called die to your flesh. I know I was telling people, a lot of you have heard me say this before, that uh, everybody wants me to start some kind of a school, but unless God says to, well, I am part of the uh, school of the seer prophets. That, that, was, that was a given. But, but no other schools, I don't have time to do all that. But I will be doing mentoring online, just so you know that. I will. I'll be doing it online, and you have to sign on to do it, but it'll be worth it. If I ever had any other kind of school, it would be called the school of dying. <laughs> Dying to your flesh. Amen. That is the second best thing you can do for God. <laughs> Amen. I remember I had a conversation with him one time about what was most important to him. He said, What's even more important than the encounters, you know, or handling the wealth or or taking dominion authority is dying to your flesh. Amen. He said, There's two reasons why you should die to your flesh. Number one, it sets you up for greatness with God that he can trust you. Number two, the devil can't use a dead person. Amen. He cannot control you. He cannot make you afraid. He, can, he cannot try to crush you. He can't do anything with you. You are dead. You are dead to yourself. You are like a dead person. And he can't do anything with you. So that is a good thing. How many people see that? Say amen. amen. Say I need to die more. Need to die more. So, I so I can live. And so can everyone around me. I stay on the edge of absolute excitement and celebration all the time. I've seen people in heaven. No one's upset about anything. 
Isn't that a wonderful life? Yeah. You know, they're not mad. They're not wanting to pay back people. I'm just going to burn you in fire. Well, I wouldn't hurt them in heaven, honey. You can't, you can't hurt people in heaven. That'd be a big waste of time. There is no boxing there, by the way. You know how boring that would be? Just no one's moving. No one's getting hurt. They're just staying in there, just hitting each other. This is kind of boring. So there are no sports that have violence in them because they would be a waste of time. No one can get hurt. No one can die. That'd be pretty boring for people who like that. <laughs> but someone out there must be wondering this, so I'm going to answer that question. Yes, there are sports in heaven. And the reason it's sports is people have gifts. And that is, how many people agree? Some people have gifts in sports. Some should forget it and go home. <laughs> like comedians, some should forget it and go home. Oh, there is a lame joke club in heaven. My dad signed up for it before he left. They all get together and laugh at each other's jokes. Hilariously. <laughs> Why does that happen? Because God has a sense of humor. He does. He has a, a big sense of humor. But no one there is dead. That may be such a shock to your human mind when I say that. I would we buried their body. You buried their body. You didn't bury their spirit, man. That's alive. That's doubt. They were alive before they had a body. That's right. And your spirit man is eternal. Yes. And your spirit man looks like you, but a lot better. Yes. 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 It says, it says, I've had people come and go, will I be male or female, or is there none in heaven? I went, go get your Bible and start reading that. Because it says you will be known as you will know. And yes, you will look like you and people will recognize you. That's right. You just look better. You got the glory on you. You don't have to worry about bad hair days. Your makeup, you don't need makeup in heaven. You wear the glory. It's the best you can possibly have. You're all young. No one is old. There are no handicapped people. There are no glasses in heaven. <laughs> Everybody has beautiful hair. Yeah! And there's lots of food to eat. God said, that's important. Make sure you tell them we give them more than grapes. Yeah. And people go, what are you talking about people eating in heaven? They don't have to eat in heaven. I went, well, then maybe you don't want me when you get there. <laughs> I'm going to have some. Besides, one of the biggest event they'll ever had is called the Marriage Supper. <laughs> Does it say a snack? No. It says a supper. No. In the South, we know what supper is. No. That's like 10 things on your table. Yes. And it all tastes good. Yes. You notice Jesus didn't leave. <laughs> he didn't leave the, uh, what do you call that little part of the wedding? The reception. <laughs> The Holy Spirit just told me. I didn't think of that myself. He's right here. He tells me all the time when I forget something. <laughs> and then he's telling me what to say. He said, why is she saying those crazy things? I thought this was about heaven. It is. It's fun. It's not earth. Amen. Amen. This is a shadow. This place that we live in now is a shadow. Even with all the majesty of the mountains and the beauty of, of the beaches and the islands, and there's so much God was so creative when he made this planet compared to what the other ones look like, right? Yeah. He didn't want to live on a rock. No. And Saturn at least has rings you can slide around on. Some of them don't have anything. So Earth is pretty good, but it's a tiny dot compared to some of the other ones. Like a little... You ever, did you ever go and maybe actually check out stuff like good stuff online, like the difference between Pluto and, and uh, Earth? Yeah. yeah, it's a big difference. We're a speck. 
We have little tiny speck out in the middle of the cosmos. And yet all of heaven is watching this little speck. They're very excited about what's going on right now. Uh, no one is uh, getting the rapture rug ready to come rescue you either. <laughs> there will be one one day that may make you feel better. Because some people are saying there isn't one. Some opposed to the people saying there isn't one. Okay. There is going to be one. He will come back. Amen? Amen. When we're loving each other a lot. After we've handled the wealth of the wicked. Who wants to miss that, right? Amen. Building for the kingdom. Amen. Shifting governments and shaping nations. Amen. Yeah, we got to do all that first. Amen. Amen. We got to leave a good testimony. That's right. For the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. Yeah, we got to take power over. Say all. all. Say it loud. All. The power of the enemy. The power of the enemy. That's right. He didn't give us a little bit. Demons were terrified of him. We're made in his image. They should be afraid of us. He said to go back and talk about the food for just a minute. If that's okay. If you're, if you, you do still get sometimes hungry in heaven, I don't think it's more of a hunger like I have to eat, but man, I saw that and that looks really good, I want it, that kind of a thing. Yeah. Because I have all kinds of food up there and it's all free, there's no allergies, there's no, no gluten stuff up there. You know, you eat what you want to, it's made out of light, it's absorbed into your spiritual body which is made out of light. Light is the number one substance in heaven. The mansions are made out of it. The streets of gold are. We are. Yeah. We're made out of light. Say, we are light. We are light. God is light. God is light. The food is light. It's it kind of hard to kill something even up there. Maybe <laughs> staring you in the eye. What do you think you're doing? <laughs> I'm coming to sit at your table tonight to eat. <laughs> but you're not eating me on your table. <laughs> By the way, you'll have lots of dinner guests because a lot of the mansions I've seen have seating for a hundred people in their in their dining room. Everybody wants to know you, they want to visit you, they want to spend, you know, be be in your presence and do fun things together. People plan huge events in heaven. Because we still help each other up there. But it's not work. It's like we're having a huge event for like 50,000 people. And people, well, I'll come help with that. You help with designing things or decorating. And you don't have to cook food unless you really want to. I'm not. <laughs> you would all sit at your, the table and you would say what you wanted. And in front of everybody appears the food that they want. Cooked the best you have ever had. The best spices, the best temperature. It's amazing. It's delicious. And when you're done, what's left disappears. There's no cleanup. Amen. This is our Father's house. And He has the best for us. And even the most unexpected people in heaven get some of the biggest blessings in heaven. The ones who stay in their little prayer closet for 70 years and prayed in moves of God. Yep. Nobody saw their face. They have some of the biggest mansions Amen. in heaven. Amen. And everybody's happy for each other. Amen. There's no rejection. Hallelujah. No one is ever rejected in heaven. Amen. Everybody's loved. Amen. And it's not just that there's peace. It's like you're consumed with it. The peace flows in and out of you everywhere you go. You sit on a rock in comfort, which is uh, something that's alive, comes up and wraps itself around you. And then the rock you're sitting in starts to worship God. Then everything in the forest you're in begins to worship God. The trees worship. The little pebbles even worship God. 
everything does. Say honor. Honor. As it is. not true at all. They know it's put in them. There is a God. They know that. And so we need to live like there is one. And we belong to him. Amen? Amen. So heaven is this amazing, beautiful place where you, where you travel on light or even your own worship. You travel on your own worship across the skies of heaven into the throne room. One of the most magnificent places, and just you need to know this, he has more than one. I mean, God has more than one throne. He has a commissioning throne room. He has a board room that is a throne room. He has a court room where there is a throne in it. And there's the one outside with these magnificent mountains that are burning with these um, stones of fire all around them. So people are caught up to different places and they'll go, oh no, that wasn't there. I didn't see that there. Well, you haven't been all over heaven and neither have I. Yeah. But if he made it, he can put there whatever he wants. Yeah. So I understand you had, you had a real encounter in heaven. A lot of people are caught up in their dreams and taken to heaven. Mm -hmm. It was so vivid and so real. It's been 30 years and you never forgot it. You were there. Yep. That was an encounter you have while you were sleeping. Because yeah. he can do that too. Amen. So there's more than one throne room. The commissioning throne room is the one that talks about the, the horns on the altar. Yeah. And you have a layer of you in heaven. Who wants to hear about this? Yes. yes. How are you seated in heavenly places? How many people know? Some people know because they've heard me. You literally are, yeah. right now, you yeah. Yeah. are seated in heavenly places. Yeah. With Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. It's because of the way he made us. That's right. Our souls have layers. Yeah. Every, la every layer is an image of you. Yeah. It looks just like you. He takes them sometimes and sends them in foreign countries to preach the gospel. Really? And people have seen people have seen somebody they know that's in another place and they've seen them preaching the gospel in different places. Yeah. And people wake up and remember themselves preaching the gospel in a foreign land thinking it was a dream. Yeah, come on. Yeah. It's how God made us. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so he sends our layers places sometimes while we're sleeping. Sometimes he does it while we're awake. Yeah. That doesn't mean that layer he knows. It just feels like it's, it's really you because it is. Is this too deep for anybody? No. He made us. We are layered beings. Our body has layers. Our spirit man has layers. Even our soul has layers. Our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. Those are layers, right? Yes. So even your soul has those three layers. Your spirit man has layers. Your spirit man has a voice. It, your, your spirit man can actually speak. If that weren't true, you wouldn't be speaking in heaven when you were there. Your body's in the ground, right? But your spirit man can sing in heaven. And it can talk in heaven. It can eat in heaven. So your spirit man also has layers in it. Your physical man certainly has layers, right? He's got a skeletal part, right? He's got all your body, your organs, your skin. He made us layered because they also have layers. Especially Holy Spirit has unlimited layers of himself. And the reason he knows where everything is, all at the same time, no matter where it is, is when he sends a layer of himself, it's a whole of him. Wow. Amen. Wow. 
And he knows what's going on all the time, everywhere. Amen. Jesus. It's part of heaven. Yeah. And so he knows when he moves into you, when you invite him in, you know he won't come in without you inviting. Heaven's protocol is you have to invite. Amen. Christ isn't just going to jump in you. You must invite Christ. Is that true? Yes. You invite Christ to be your Savior. Is that true? Yes. And then what does he do? He comes in you. Yeah. To get the Holy Spirit. Now when you get born again, he'll come alongside you. The Holy Spirit is right here. Okay, he's sent. He's sent. Is that what he says? Jesus sends him, right? But to have him indwell you, you have to invite him. Is that right? Yes. You invite the Holy Spirit. He sends a layer of himself, which is a whole of him, moves in you, and you become the temple of the Holy Spirit. So see, they have layers. If Christ didn't have layers, how could he be in everybody else at the same time? It's still him. And so God designed a way that when we give ourselves to him, he has ways supernaturally that he will use us. So the first layer we give is when we're born again. And we do we give ourselves to Jesus? Yes. Say yes. Yes. I did. Then he takes a layer of you from your soul and seats it in heavenly places. That is how you are seated there. That's why we should see things from above. Amen? We should think on things above, correct? Because we are seated with him. It's not like we're way down here. And this thing, we are seated. This is the other thing. If he lives in us, but we know he moved to heaven, correct? How could that happen? Because there's layers of him. And he sends a layer in us when you're born again. So you have that layer in him. But he is living in heaven right now. Seated on the right hand of the Father. And you, when you go to heaven, he'll greet you in heaven, take you up the steps of the throne, and give you back to the Father. Holy Spirit is a layer being with unlimited layers of himself. He will never run out of layers of himself. So there's plenty of him to go around. If somebody wants him and you've never asked him, please invite him to come in. Amen? Amen. And that's how the three in one, how, how they do that. Their Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Father's sitting on the throne. Jesus steps inside of him. Holy Spirit steps inside of him. And they are the Godhead. Then yeah. they will step out, and they are the three of them. Amen? Amen? These are like the most basic things you need to know about heaven. Very basic. This is basic heaven culture. Basic. You came from him. Yeah. You lived in him. You moved in and out of him. You saw everything he saw that ever came before his throne or where he went himself. So you have already been from the beginning to the end and the end to the beginning. Amen? Amen. Amen. We are his sons and daughters. Amen. When you go home to heaven, you're coming not as somebody's husband or wife, aunt, uncle, child. I mean, you always remember that. But when you go home, you're coming home as his son and his daughter. And that's why every single person gets a mansion. Come on, man. You get your own. You will live right near your family. You can move in with them for a while if you want to. They're going to move in with you. <laughs> but everyone likes one another, remember? Praise the Lord! <laughs> Someone said, well, what, what if I was married three times? You'll have three best friends. <laughs> and you'll all get along just fine. Because in heaven, you are not married. Say amen. Amen. It says, till death do you part, doesn't it? Say yes. yes. But you can spend all the, all the time you want to with the one who was your spouse. You can go do fun things together. Go see friends. Yes, yeah, so you never know what I'm going to talk about, do you? People need to know about where they came from. Right? Because we aren't here forever. You get to go home for R&R. &R. Before he makes the new earth. Amen. Amen. Yes. And this is going to be like a million times bigger than this one. Amen. It's going to be huge. Did you ever think about the fact that the father was willing 
to pack his bags and move from his own home to a new home that would be our home. Wow, that's good. Yeah. Because right now, when you go home to heaven, you're going to the Father's house. The new earth will be our house. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Amen. Amen. You have lots of property. Eternity is so worth it. It's so worth it to give yourself to Christ. You don't want the other eternity. No. No. And so I was mentioning before about this is just my introduction. This is my little introduction. See, some people know I go to bed at 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. Before the sun comes up, I try to go to bed. And then I sleep four hours, and then I'm up. But I don't do well with morning meetings. I'm just going to warn you. If I come in my pajamas, <laughs> I've got nice flannel ones, okay? If they ask me to do an early morning one, I'm going to be in my pajamas. That would be like if I have to be there at 8 or 9 or 10. That's my sleeping time. I'm not wearing my bedroom slippers. But if you invite me any time after, let's say about, I don't know, 6, I will be here to 5 a.m. All right. <laughs> I could be here to 5 a.m. Because I'm awake. Me too. Me too. And, and we warn people when they want to have me stay in their home while I'm speaking, uh, don't give me a bed. <laughs> Because I'll be laying there wide awake, bored. I gotta have something to make me happy. I'm gonna move around. I'm making noise in your house. I might be cooking at 2 a.m. That's my normal lifestyle. Yes. Okay, that's my lifestyle. I do. <laughs> well, I promise you, God is up all night long. If you need him, Jesus is up all night long, and so is Holy Spirit. Yes. And the hardest thing for me to try to deal with in this earth is time. T-I-M-E does not exist in heaven. There is no time. That means your family could be there forever with you. <laughs> But, but you will you will love them all, okay? <laughs> I've seen some people's faces like, I have to put up with that. <laughs> I've had people say, I don't know if I want to go. I want you, you'd rather go there in the other place. <laughs> you'll like the company you'll have there, okay? <laughs> you'll not like the company. So learn to let go. Don't hang on to anything that upsets you, that distracts you. I know what they meant when they said get rid of everything, every weight that holds you back. Those are cares, frustrations, aggravations, you know, uh, unforgiveness, all kinds of just soul clutter. Yeah. Say, we don't need soul clutter. We don't need soul clutter. We have to leave room in there. We have to leave room in there. For God. For God. To use us. To use us. If you start getting revelation, you won't want anything else. Oh, yes. you, you will not want old stuff anymore. Right. You, you can't even be satisfied with what you used to be satisfied with before. Amen. You will get so hungry for more revelation. Amen. Yes. And so there's a lot of places that don't teach it. Yes. So God's just giving it all to the people. Yes. He, God did tell me one time. Those, those that are ignoring you or pretending that you're not there or don't want to hear about you because you know things that they don't know about, they'll be beating your door down one day to get it. You are welcome. <laughs> Any leader in the body of Christ who wants to deal with revelation, live heaven culture, command an army, crush the darkness, and let their people be empowered and trained, you are welcome. I'm not here to take anybody's people away. I don't have a sheep pen. <laughs> I know how many times you've gotten bit as a pastor. My heart goes out to you. And I stand here to represent the pastors of this world. 
You better be nice to them. Yeah. You got a pastor, you better be nice to them. You better bless them. You better give big offerings every Sunday or Saturday or Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Whatever you go, you need to bless those pastors. They have given their life away for you. Okay? It's like having a family of what? 50 to 5,000, 50,000? Would you like that many family members? <laughs> Calling you night and, uh, night and day, asking you for prayer, coming over to see them, uh, or coming up to complain about the new carpet you just chose for the church that you spent three years raising money for. <laughs> you don't like the color of their suit? Then buy them a new one. Take them out to dinner and do something nice for them. Yeah. Write them a love letter from your family. Come on. Yeah. Come on. I wrote a love letter to my pastor's wife. I am married to you all. You are never going to get rid of me. Yeah. They, they were so blessed they read it to the congregation. And they said, we want one from everybody here. We're supposed to care about the one who God has put us under, right? right? You cannot be over authority unless you're under authority. Trust me, I was under authority for like 40 years. I, I was pureed, pureed, whether you're from the south or the north, whichever way you want to say it, roof or rough, rough, whatever, roof, rough. The thing over your head that God gave you. I'm actually here to talk about the fire of God tonight. Yeah. Baptism and fire. That's really what I'm going to talk about. And then I'm going to give it out. Yeah. There are fire angels waiting outside this building. <laughs> For me just to say go. So, you know, you're going to get this is sort of like your appetizer. <laughs> This is sort of like your appetizer right here. And then we're going to have the meat. That's going to be the offering. I didn't hear any laughter. <laughs> Say amen. I tell people, people want to take my book away and give it, they want to give it away free to everybody. I, mean, I want to see you go into Books a Million and go take all the books off that shelf. Say, I think we should have these for free. <laughs> I said, I think if there's Bibles there, I think you even have to pay for the Bible, right? <laughs> Salvation is free, but after that, it costs money for things, doesn't it? You didn't get your clothes for free, your home for free, unless you won something that was good. I bless you, in Jesus' name. <laughs> but things cost to live in this world, and thank God we're getting the wealth of the wicked, okay? They've been making it and saving it for us. And I know what that looks like. And I know what's going to happen when that starts hitting people. You're going to be running outside your house for 10 days screaming at the top of your lungs. <laughs> Amen. You can build a whole city. Amen. This is wealth from heaven, okay? Yeah. All the wealth belongs to God. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Everything in the world, is that his? Yeah. Then it's his anyway. Yeah. So if he takes the wealth, and gives it to us. How much are you going to have? Everything. There'll come a day when you won't ever have to work again. Because you're working for him. Full time. And he will have us so unhindered. With nothing standing in our way. To do what he has given us to do. It's like walking in a dream. And you don't contend anymore. You don't contend for every little thing you want to do. There will be a season where darkness will be so pushed back away from us on purpose for these great days of God to be on the earth. Amen? Amen. It's going to change everyone. Hallelujah. It's so much better to know about it. And then you get your mindset changed. Get your head changed. But it is not going to be the same way it always has been before. It's not going to be. And I understood Jeff the other day when he said, don't miss the opportunity to give in to something that God is doing now. I'm not talking about five years down the road. I'm not. We're, <laughs> we're already in a new time. This is the new time. 
For God said, Behold, I will do a new thing and it shall spring forth. You know that scripture? Yeah. He won't hold it back. That's this time we're living in. Yes, amen. It is not the day of his son's wrath. It is not the day of his wrath. Everybody yell it. It's not the day of his wrath. It is the day of his son's power. Say the day of his power. The day of his power. Those are two different things. Are you intelligent enough to understand that? Yeah. Wrath means death, destruction, everything falling apart, burning up, being blown up, wiping out whole cities of people, things melting like the universe. Hello? <laughs> that is not what's happening. No. We're leaving out half the Bible. He did not change his mind. Thank you, Lord. He didn't have all of us born now. Just to experience that. Everyone say this. We, we have, not have not been appointed, been appointed under, wrath. under wrath. So this, so this cannot, cannot be the day of his wrath. Of his wrath. There you go. One and one. That's two. Woo. I don't care how much people fight. About it, I don't care how much doom and gloom they want to report. Right. Hide in the hills, eat your sea rations, don't buy them, they're not good. <laughs> you know what? Even the raccoons won't eat them. Nope. It's <laughs> true. We have raccoons behind us. There are certain things they just will not eat, they'll walk away from it. We were not designed to live on sea rations. Okay, this is it. Everyone says, God is our supplier. God is our supplier. Is he going to give you sea rations to live on? No. no. Do they have sea rations in heaven? No. Say on earth, on earth. As, it in heaven. as it is in heaven. We want the good stuff. We want the good stuff. Ice cream. Ice cream, yes. <laughs> Pizza. <laughs> you are giving into your future. If you always thought, oh, we want angels to show up. There are billions here. Yeah. There are billions. Come on. Not millions. Come on. There are billions of angels here. Now, counting the ones watching from heaven right now. Because the throne room right now is open over this building right now. They are very interested to know who wants to do things God's way in his time. Yeah. And stop being ordinary. Because right. you are not made to be ordinary. Yeah. How do I know that? Genesis 1.26. That's right. That's right. Let us make man in our image. And after our likeness. You know what that word likeness means? After the way we operate. They're not talking, they're not saying the same two, they're not saying the same thing. They're not saying two things that mean the same thing. How's that sound? <laughs> So I'm eight right now. Cut me some slack. <laughs> They're not saying the same thing. Image and likeness is not repeating the first thing. Okay? Likeness is not image. Likeness is how they operate. So we're made in the way they look. And we're supposed to operate the way they operate. Amen? And we haven't even known that. And I don't even know how many millions of Christians have said that scripture and not even understood it. It's called revelation. Yeah. We're supposed to operate like that. Say they rule. They rule. They have dominion. They, have dominion. they, create. they create. They have no fear. They have, no fear. They have ultimate law. They, they are over everything on the earth. And we're made just like them. How about that? You are his sons and daughters. And we may all look different. Okay? We may respond differently to things. We might like different kinds of music. And there certainly is almost every kind of music in heaven. It's divine. It's beautiful. It's amazing. They have Christian rock. The angels crowd serve. <laughs> they have concerts up there I'm telling you that shift the heavens over heaven I get excited 
They have nothing wicked, defiling, sinful, Hallelujah. impure. They have no profane words. Lord. Say none. None. Say we weren't made for them. We, we, were made for them. Them. we should not speak them. We should not speak them. We should not listen to them. We should not listen to them. What if we rated the movies we watched by that? Because for some reason, people think it's okay to watch certain things, but not certain things. If it's not in heaven, this is how I get it. If it's not in heaven, I don't want to see it. That's right. If it's not in heaven, I don't want to hear it. Because I represent them. Amen. I have to. I represent them. And you may not have known this. I know there's a heavenly language. I know there's a language of the angels. I've, I've heard the language of the angels before. Uh, every tongue is mentioned in heaven. Every tribe, tongue, and nation is in heaven. Yep. Everybody understands everybody's language in heaven. Everybody can speak anybody's language in heaven. There is a, there is a tongue of angels that's being released in the earth, by the way. That hasn't been released before. But... There is no profane language in heaven. It wasn't in you when you came, and it should be coming out of you now. But it is hell's only language. I have been there. And profanity is their only language. So when you say it, guess who you attract? Ooh, not good. Yeah. And when you say it, do people think you're a believer? It shouldn't be in you as a witness. It, it shouldn't be coming out of you out of anger. It shouldn't be having any part of you. It calls soul clutter, like gray matter. Mm -hmm. Gray matter. I remember when God said, that we need to be filled with the light of God, the light and not the darkness, right? Yes. And he says, so pray when Satan comes by to look at you, he doesn't find gray. Yes. Oh, wow. We got to hear both sides, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if he wants to help you live more like they do, then you need to hear things like that. Yeah. I've never heard anyone say that we're family with hell's language. Yeah. But it is. That's why we don't like it. I don't like it. If I'm on anyone, they swear I lose it for my soul. Mm -hmm. And then I begin to praise God. Is that my phone? It is my phone. <laughs> it's time for the offering. <laughs> Jen's shaking her head. That's fine. That's not fine. I set an alarm. Or Holy Spirit said it. Sometimes he does that. The other night, I was trying to wonder if it's time for me to go sleep, and my angel, literally, my personal angel comes up and goes, behind me. I'm like, oh, is it that apparent that I need sleep? <laughs> it, it, it's probably in the bag sitting next to you. Or it's my iPad. See, I, I don't know about time, so I have to set alarms. I have all kinds of alarms set. Just push any buttons on it, that's what I do. <laughs> it, it works. My phone don't work, I go. And my angel will go, you just better give up. I'll just hit every button. And if you're out in the boat and the engine breaks down, just hit it with a hammer. It works every time. My husband knows, I've hit many engines. Because it's a plane where, you know, the alligators are coming off the shore. We're out there in the river fishing. Well, he's fishing. I'm watching him. And he's like, he says, I don't know what to do with that one. Just hit it. Just hit it with a hammer. <laughs> if I hit it, I might break something. Does it matter? It's not working. <laughs> so he's turning around doing something. I don't know what he's doing, but I, I took that thing off the boat, whatever the, the motor thing he is. And I took the hammer and go, oh, wham! Wow! And he goes, Shh. What'd you do? I'm like, my one and only tool I have. <laughs> I think some of us need to be hit with a hammer sometimes by Holy Spirit. Give us a jump start. Amen? Amen. So we are taking up an offering. Amen? Amen.
Amen. I hope you're happy about that. Yeah. I'm giving my own offerings. Because yeah, I want a part of what was shared. Yeah. Okay? I do. I, I am a great giver. I have a spirit of generosity. It goes down through my generations. If I don't get to give something to somebody, I want to cry. I'll actually pray to God and have someone give me money so I can give it, give it to somebody. Even beyond the offering. I want to bless people. That is God's heart to bless. I have his heart. He wants to bless. You know what? Give something and you get blessed. Given it shall be given unto you. Some people have so much seed in the ground, you got a forest growing somewhere. I see that. This is a time for suddenlies, okay? I've already had two suddenlies this week before I came here. Two amazing suddenlies. One of them has to do with the resurrection movie I'm going to be in. And, and the CEO and inventor of this huge, massive corporation literally came up and handed me his card and said, here, I want you on my board. You, you remember people saying that people would seek you out to get counsel, wise counsel, yes. like from everywhere? Well, this is one of the things that's happening is they're inviting people who know God to be on their board. On. You don't have to live there. Right. You just have to show up and give God's counsel. Yeah. Right. Come on. But you get paid for it. Come on. Please take the money if that happens. <laughs> I know people are being called to see kings in other countries for counsel. They don't know what to do. And they want to know what God has to say. That's, right. That's why the president has so many prophets around him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whether you believe it or not, Amen. he does love God. Amen. I mean, it was bad enough he won. <laughs> but dear Lord, he's a Christian. Yeah. And he let God back in our country. They didn't expect that. Yeah. Like getting the fake news a bad day. Yeah. <laughs> I did sincerely pray for all of them because they're messing up their souls. That's right. What you what you say goes in your own soul. So all the stuff they've been saying mm. is going in their own soul and it's messed up their mind. Yep. Wow. And they can't think anything else. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. That's why they're messed up. They need a soul checkup. So right after the election, I did a broadcast and I said, this is a, a post-election free therapy for the Democrats. I know a couple people actually did it and they got free. I don't want to see people's lives and families messed up because of what has consumed their soul. I mean, families were separated, right? Over something so simple that we just do every four years, and yet that is a spiritual battle. It is a spiritual battle, amen? So I still pray for them, God, to set them free, amen? But we're going to take up an offering so you can be a part of what you're going to get tonight. You leave them with the fire of God in you. Amen? Amen. You're hearing about your future. Not just your soon future. Your far future. Yeah. Okay, what?